Yep. You are one of the people that's been speaking out a lot on COVID issues. And one of the things that frustrates both of us very deeply is how few people are speaking out. So talk me through why you, why did you speak out? You could have kept your head down and continued with the other things that you were talking about previously. Why did you actually stick your head above the parapet in the first place? Uh I, I'm going to make a long story short, but what happened was it was a Thursday. Hey, this is a slow afternoon. chat. Make a long story oh, long. Slow, okay, all right. I, I, it was a Thursday afternoon, and you know I was doing personal development. I teach people how to be coaches, speakers, authors, international bestsellers. That's what I do, and I do a bit of lay preaching. And I was sitting on my uh, outside there. I had I was all suited up, and just something said to me, "Get up and speak." And I had not a script, nothing. I opened my mouth and I said, "Scott Morrison, you got a lot. You got a lot to answer for." What happened at the G7? Our country had one death, eight months, peaceable life, no restriction, relatively free society. You come back from the G7 and hell vomits on our country. What mm. happened? What happened? We need some answers. And uh, I just went to town. Next thing I know, 30, 40, 50,000 views later, and, uh, <laughs> and, and I, I smell a rat here. And this rat, manifests itself under coercion, threat, bribe, um, you know, treating people like they're fools. This is no longer about public health. This is about control. Yesterday in Victoria, you guys had 13 deaths and from Brady Brett Sutton's own words, most of them were doubly jabbed. Now, if I'm wrong, I want to be corrected. I'm not here telling people where to get jabbed, whether they not get jabbed. That's not my issue here. My issue is the hill of freedom. And our freedoms are being eroded and taken away. We've got people celebrating the fact that they can take a mask off and have a drink. I'm sorry? What? When we have, we have created a culture now of people that don't know their freedoms. And what annoys the living daylights out of me, and again, uh, my, you know, where are the church leaders 59 mm. if not more percent of this country claims to be christian and they're sitting mm -hmm. there getting fringe benefits tax they're sitting up charities where they're getting government grants and they're shutting their mouths while they and what a couple of them they honestly the big name ones the big brands mm. they get up and saying oh we're under attack they're attacking they're attacking your brand but what are you saying about the medical apartheid? What are you mm -hmm. saying about the breakdown of family? What are you mm -hmm. saying about the suicides that are happening every single day in members of your congregation, preacher, mm -hmm. pastor, priest? Where mm -hmm. are you? You are silent. And let me tell you something. For evil to increase, all good men need to do is stay silent. Silence, 100%. silence is actually a public endorsement of wrong when you don't speak out. Yeah, and we and, and again, I'm, I'm again. I don't want to offend anyone because I know there's a mixed audience here. No, this morning, offend. I was reading. Offend. We, we yeah, don't. We don't censor ourselves here. We, okay, we speak our yeah, minds. Okay, okay. Yeah, I'm gonna go. I, I, this morning I was reading in, in, in a good book, and when P Peter was, he challenged the oppressiveness of the censorship that they were trying to put on the gospel. Paul mm -hmm. then goes to uh, uh, to a town, casts his uh, demonic entity out of a young girl. The income is affected. They beat them, throw them in prison. Mm -hmm. They start singing. The jailhouse rocks. Mm. The, the, the prison keeper gets let loose. Paul goes, don't kid yourself. We're still here, sunshine. And, and, and he goes, what must I do to be saved? Mm. And, and, and then they report this to the magistrate who threw them in prison, beat them up, locked them up. And they said, you know what? Let them go quietly. And you know what Paul says? Not a chance in the world. Yeah. I want a parade. You yeah. beat me. You threw me in prison. And yep. now you're freaked out because I'm a Roman citizen. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's what they said. You, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. You, what they were cute was a narrative against yeah. the, 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 they said, you know, you're teaching us Romans to do something that's not Roman law. He was a Roman citizen. Mm. And right now, our citizens are under attack. And these woke, these preachers that are drunk on Woka Cola, <laughs> seriously, they're drunk on Woka. I don't know what Kool Aid they've been drinking from. Uh, they're drunk on Woka Cola and they're sitting there and they say, we can't allow politics in the pulpit. Let me tell you something. Dietrich Bonhoeffer did. Martin mm -hmm. Luther King did. William Tyndale did. Paul yep. the Apostle did. Moses yep. did. Gideon did. These guys are so woke, they wouldn't have enough power to blow out a candle Listen. in the middle of a gale storm.